The wolf has always been thought of as a bad creature, something to be feared. They are reoccurring figures throughout history and folklore legends. Stories were told of Little Red Riding Hood, The Boy Who Cried Wolf, and other legends that struck fear in many people. Life on the frontier was harsh. As settlers began to make a living off this land in the West, people were successful in exterminating wolves to save livestock, game animals, and the community of this supposedly dangerous and dark predator. The Wyoming Territorial Legislature in 1875 authorized a 50-cent bounty for wolves. In 1879, it raised to $1. By 1893, it had risen to $8. In 1905, the state lowered the bounty and people were outraged and began to form their own bounty associations. They offered $20 for a pup and $50 to $60 for an adult. Soon, some groups offered up to $1,000 for a dead wolf. From 1895 to 1910, the state of Wyoming paid over 30,000 wolf bounties, and the state looked to the United States Congress for assistance. In 1915, the U.S. Biological Survey took control of predator efforts in Wyoming and killed 566 wolves. In the next 10 years, 100 wolves in Yellowstone were killed or shipped to zoos by the National Park Service. These early wolf elimination policies were motivated by the great concern of farmers and ranchers losing their way of life. By 1929, the Forest Service predicted there was only six wolves left in the national park. Wolves were no longer viewed as a threat. After over a century of extermination policy in Wyoming, one of the last wolves to roam Yellowstone was killed in 1926. The gray wolf reintroduction of 1995 was a decision based on science. This was a turning point for decision-making for the Yellowstone environment. Environmental policy began to change in the 1960s. From the snail darter in the Tennessee area to the whooping crane in the western states, people started to realize certain species were in need of protection for their environments. As animals became extinct, they influenced their habitats negatively. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, organizations, environmental groups, and scientists began to study the impact of specific animals on their environments and realized eliminating them could potentially be harmful to their habitats. Public views of the wolf changed with the environmental movement in the 1960s. The turning point in this dispute came when the Leopold Report was published in 1963, containing new environmental management ideas. Aldo Leopold was one of the first to recommend and develop a plan for the reintroduction of the gray wolves in Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. The first Endangered Species Act was passed to help protect wolves in 1966, while biologists recommended the reintroduction. In 1974, the wolf was almost extinct in the West and was placed on the endangered species list. As our understanding of science um, grew more sophisticated, we realized that, um, in fact, this was a very destructive program and that predators had a, an extremely important role in terms of controlling overpopulation of other animals. Based on the Leopold Report saying that the wolf was essential to the Yellowstone environment, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service completed the Northern Rocky Mountain Wolf Reintroduction Plan in 1980. This would be the first reintroduction plan of such a controversial predator in the national park system. The announcement of the reintroduction caused many vigorous debates throughout the country. Hearings and meetings were held in towns across the northwestern states. Hunters and outfitters argued wolves would kill too many game animals. Ranchers were extremely concerned for their livestock and feared conservationists would use wolves to limit their ability to graze on federal lands outside Yellowstone. People didn't want the predator coming back to the Yellowstone area because they believed gray wolves weren't threatened because they weren't extinct in Canada and Alaska. The hunters and ranchers based their arguments off of anecdotal stories and not off compiled scientific research. Ranchers and hunters felt like their voices weren't being heard because the federal government was in charge of the Wolf Project and not the state of Wyoming. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service responded to the meetings and published reports by saying wolves would balance out the ecosystem in Yellowstone. They believed they were a necessity. 
Wolves in Yellowstone would help control elk and other ungulate populations, reducing the amount of animals that starve every winter. Wolves also kept elk moving, giving plants a chance to grow. Wolves provided food for bears and scavengers by leaving leftover meat from carcasses. For me, the wolves are just another animal on the landscape that we live with. Although I think that there are some situations um, where wolves just cannot be welcome. Despite these legal challenges, the reintroduction moved forward. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service reintroduced the gray wolves in 1995. The wolves were kept in one-acre acclimation pens to allow them to get adjusted to their new environment. This scientific approach to the reintroduction was designed to prevent the wolves from becoming predators of domesticated animals. They transported 14 gray wolves from Canada. Biologists place one alpha male and female with several young wolves. They release them from the fenced area six weeks later. They carried out these, these big metal kennels um, with these, um, uh, th that with, you know, each kennel had a wolf in it and they, they um, brought them to the mouth of the, of the enclosure and, and opened the doors and sometimes, funny, it's fun, sometimes the wolves came flying out of there and ran as far away from the people as they could within the pen. Um, other times they actually had to like drag the wolves out of the pens. They were so, you know, they were afraid. I mean, some of them wouldn't even come out. As a part of the reintroduction, all wolves were to be collared. They reintroduced more wolves in 1966. The 30 wolves that came from Canada were considered to be an experimental population. Environmental impact study predicted there would be almost 100 wolves by 2002. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and others supporting the wolves saw great accomplishments within the reintroduction. The presence of the wolves boosts the economy in Yellowstone by $2.3 million in visitor spending per year. The most often given reason why people want the wolf is that it's part of the natural western heritage, said Wayne Brewster, deputy director of Yellowstone. In addition to visitor spending, more trees, birds, and beavers came back to Yellowstone and thrived. But hunters and ranchers still disagreed with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Hunters didn't appreciate the decrease in elk population. Without the wolves, elk were able to stay in one place, making it easier for hunters to locate them. But with wolves around, elk have to keep moving. Wolves do not understand the park boundaries and have a tendency to roam into private lands and ranches. After the reintroduction, if it was 1995, by 2000 we were having wolf kills. And so it was directly related to the reintroduction. Political groups also opposed to the reintroduction. The Wolf Reintroduction Program violates states' rights, abuses the Constitution, drains millions of dollars from more deserving federal programs, and was prematurely jammed down the throats of Westerners, said Barbara Cuban, a member of Congress for the state of Wyoming. On October 1, 2012, Wyoming, following Montana and Idaho's example, began its first hunting season. This was a decision supported by the scientific community as their studies showed a high enough wolf population. But in the process of making this decision, old prejudices reemerged, such as calls for elimination and taking the wolf off of the predator status. But the scientific community continued their cautious approach. Now that um, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming have all begun hunts of wolves, uh, we are um, very involved in, um, in efforts to ensure that park wolves are not um, affected to the point where they cannot survive in and around the national parks. In Gardner, Montana, there was a denial of science as many wolves with collars were being killed along the Yellowstone border, interrupting biological studies. Today, we still use our culture and previous beliefs about wolves that cause us to overlook the benefits to the environment from the wolf reintroduction. The gray wolf reintroduction of 1995 was a decision based on science, though the incorporation of science in environmental legislation will continue to be a struggle. This was a turning point for decision-making in the Yellowstone environment. <laughs>